Okay, we're covering 8-6 today with the beginning of radical uh, functions. And today we're going to rewrite radical expressions using rational exponents and simplify and evaluate radical expressions and expressions containing rational exponents. All right, powers and inverses. So 5 and negative 5 are square roots of 25 because 5 squared is equal to 25 and negative 5 squared is equal to 25. 2 is the cube root of 8 because 2 cubed is 8. 2 and negative 2 are the fourth roots of 16 because both of those to the fourth power are equal to positive 16. And so a is the nth root of b if a to the n is equal to b. And that probably is something you already knew. So the nth root of a real number can be written as a radical expression where n is the index and a is the radicand. So we're used to seeing the square root, like the square root of 25. This is a radical expression. Here your index is equal to 2 and your radicand is 25. You could have, you could also write the cube root or the fourth root. So let's rewrite this one, the fourth root of 16. So here your index is equal to 4 and your radicand is equal to 16. When there is more than one root, for instance, in this case, in this case, the radical sign indicates only the principal root. So that means for this one here, if I wanted the negative root, I would say the negative fourth root of 16, which would indicate I wanted my negative 2, or the positive root. So the radical indicates only the principal. If no sign is indicated, then the principal root is going to be the positive root. All right, so numbers and types of real root. If you have an odd index, 3, 5, 7, that means there's going to be only one real root. So cubed root of 8 is only going to be 2. You can also have the cubed root of negative 8, which is going to be negative 2. An even index positive rad radicand. So example would be like this example or this, this example. We've got a positive radicand and it's an even index because it's the square, which is, or this is the square and this is the fourth. There's going to be two real roots. If you have a negative even index and a negative radicand, so that would be like the square root of, of negative two, and we know we don't have any real negative square roots. There's going to be no real roots. And then the radicand of 0, any root of 0 is going to be 0. So you have one root of 0. Again, if there's no radical index, it's going to mean it's by default 2. The index is going to be 2 or square root. All right, this is not shouldn't be in this presentation. Find all real roots. Sixth root of 64. So if I look at my rules, remember if I have, okay, let's try it again. If I have an even index and a positive radicand, that means I'm going to have two real roots. So I'm going to, sixth root of 64, what do I multiply together six times? to get to 64. Well, we can do this by factoring. This is 8 times 8. This is 4 times 2, 4 times 2, and you can probably see where this is going. 2 times 2, 2 times 2. So the sixth root, like the square root, we needed two of a kind. The sixth root means we need six of the same factor. And in this case, the same factor is going to be 2. We have six twos here. So the sixth root is going to be positive 2, but it's also going to be negative 2, because negative 2 to the 6th power is also a positive 64. Cube root of negative 216. So again, if we use our rules, it's an odd index. So that means we're going to have one real root. So what are we multiplied by 3 times to get 216? And it's going to be negative 6. Fourth root of negative 1, 1024. So we have 
even index, negative radicand, that means there are no real roots. And here's one for you to try. See how you do. All right, we're going to look at some rules, property of nth roots. So we've looked at, I think, some of these with uh, respect to maybe square root, but never beyond that. So for a and b greater than 0, the nth root of a product is equal to the product of the nth root. So what's that saying? So it's saying the cube root of 16 is equal to the cube root of 8 times the cube root of 2. And this is kind of how we've been doing square roots. We find factors. Um, and pull out the pairs and leave behind what's not paired up. We're going to do the same thing for nth roots, except instead of for a square root, we want to find, we need to find two of the same factor. For a cube root, we're going to need to find three of the same factor. For a seventh root, we're going to need to find seven of the same factor. So we're still going to be factoring and trying to find groups of identical factors. It also tells us the nth root of a times b, so this is the general rule, is equal to the nth root of a times the nth root of b. Quotient property, we've used this for square root. The square root of a fraction is equal to the square, square root of the numerator divided by the square root of the denominator, and that applies for any kind of root. So the nth root of a fraction is equal to the nth root of the numerator divided by the nth root of the denominator. So remember, if there's a radical in the denominator, we have to rationalize it by multiplying out the radical. Let's look at some examples. Simplify each expression, assume all variables are positive. So we don't worry about negative fourth roots of, or fourth roots of negative numbers. All right. So I would do this the same way I would do a square root, except I'm looking for four of a kind instead of two of a kind. So I know that 81, whoops, that's not what I want, the fourth root. So 81 factors into 9 and 9, so I have 2, but I need 4. This is 3 and 3, 3 and 3. So I have 4 of a kind, so I'm going to pull out a 3. So the fourth root of 81 is going to be 3. x to the 12th is, is 12 x's. How many groups of 4 is that? Well, it's going to be x to the 4th times x to the 4th times x to the 4th. It's going to be three groups of 4 x's. So for each of these 4 x's, I pull out 1 x. So it's going to be x times x times x. So this is going to end up being 3 times x cubed. And they kind of show you that here. Next one. All right, so this is a fraction 4th root of 16 8 x to the 8th over 5. So we're going to divide this up into the 4th root of this over the 4th root of this. Whoops, wrong one. 4th root of 5. We're going to leave this for now and we're going to work on this one. All right, so we need 4 of a kind. How many groups of 4 of a kind do we have with 8? We've got 2. x to the 4th times x to the 4th. We need the four of the same factor. So this is going to be four times four, two times two, two times two. So 16 breaks up into four twos. So again, this is two to the fourth. For each of these, we can pull out one. We can pull out the base. So that means on the top, we're going to have a two times an x times an x with nothing left underneath the radical index. And then fourth root. So what are we going to do? We actually have to remove this. And with a square root, we just have to, if it were the square root of 5, we could just multiply top and bottom by the square root of 5. This becomes the square root of 25, which reduces to 5. When we have the fourth root, we actually have to multiply by three more of these. We need to have four fives in order to get rid of this radical. So that's what we're going to multiply. We've got to multiply top and bottom by square root of 5, or sorry, the 4th root of 5 times the 4th root of 5 times the 4th root of 5. These should also be 4th roots. So now on the bottom, we've got the 4th root of 5 to the 5th. So this basically is the 4th root 
of 5, I'm sorry, not to the 5th, to the 4th, and this is going to be 2x squared times the 4th root of 5 cubed. This is 2x to the 4th, the 4th root of 125 over 5. And that is fully simplified. All right, one for you to try. Let's look at rational exponents. It's an exponent that can be expressed as m over, whoops, sorry about that, as m over n. So remember, rational expressions are like fractions. Rational exponents are like fractions. m and n are integers, and n not equal to 0. Radical exponents can be used, or radical expressions can be used uh, rewritten by using rational exponents and vice versa. So let's look at our rules. 16 to the 1 fourth, here's our rational exponent, is equal to the fourth root of 16 to the first. And more generally, this is the general rule, a to the m over n, the numerator gives you the power of your radicand, the denominator is your radical index. So you can rewrite it like this. a to the m over n is rewritten in radical form as the nth root of a to the m power. And as it says, denominator is the index or radical index. All right, let's look at a few of these. Write and simplify in radical form. So they give you two methods. Depending on the problem, one method may be easier than the other. So the first one says, write the expression in radical form. So again, we're going to go backwards. This is our power or exponent. This is our radical index. So this is how it would be rewritten. And which is easier to do? I think in this case, it's easier to find the fifth root of negative 32 and then cube that. So if I'm looking for the fifth root, I'm looking for five of the same factor, eight times four, four times two, two times two, two times two, whoops. So I've got five twos, this factors into five twos. And it's negative, so it's going to be a negative two. So the fifth root of negative 32 is equal to negative 2. And then we're going to take that to the third power, which is going to be negative 8. You could do it the other way. You could cube this first and get this, and then take the fifth root of that. How you do that with easily, it's not clear. You ha probably want to have to do it on your calculator, but the bottom line is you get the same answer. So that's what they're trying to show you. All right, you see if you can rewrite this in radical form and then simplify that. Write each expression by us using rational exponents. So we're going to kind of go the other way. We want to rewrite this in um, exponent or exponential form. So this is going to be numerator is the power or exponent. This is the radical, the radical index is the denominator, 13. This can be simplified. 4 over 8 is 1 half. So it's going to be 13 to the 1 half power. That's a simplified in exponential form as you can make it. This one, so again, 3 exponent goes on top. Radical index is your denominator. That becomes 3 cubed, as I have here. And then 3 cubed ends up being 27. All right, here's a couple for you to try. Properties. So these are uh, several properties. They probably look familiar. I think we've had them for um, just regular exponents. But now we're going to look at rational exponents. So product of powers just says that if we have the same base with two different multiplied together with exponents, we just add the exponents. So I think we've had this with just integer exponents. 2 squared times 2 cubed, we know, is 2 to the fifth. It's exactly the same with rational exponents. Quotient, again, just like integer exponents, if you have the same base divided by, if you have a base to an exponent divided by the same base to another exponent, you subtract the exponents. So we had, we would have it like, 
6 to the 4th over 6 squared. This is equal to 6 to the 4 minus 2 power, or just 6 squared. Same with um, rational exponents. Power, again, same rule, just showing you how it works with uh, rational exponents. So if you have a base to some power, and then you bring that whole thing to a different power, you're just multiplying. Just be careful when you're multiplying fractions. So here they have 2 thirds times 3. You put your 3 over 1 and multiply across, so it's going to be 6 thirds, which you can reduce to 2, which is where they got this. So be careful on your multiplication of fractions. And then product of uh, power of a product, basically this just means you're going to distribute your exponent across your two numbers. And last one, again, distribute. So we're going to distribute this to the numerator and denominator. All right, let's look at some examples here. Simplify. So I'm going to add the two exponents, 7 and they have a common denominator, so I'm just going to say 7 plus 11 ninths. This is equal to 7 to 18 ninths. 18 divided by 9 is 7 squared, which ends up being 49. A lot nicer looking than this original one. All right, here we have a division, so we're going to have 16 to the 3 fourths, and same base, so we're going to subtract 5 fourths. So 3 fourths minus 5 fourths is going to be 16 to the negative 2 fourths, which is 16 to the negative 1 half power. How do we make this positive? We make it positive by making it a reciprocal of itself, so it ends up being 1 over 16 to the 1 half power. And that's a simplification. Here's a couple for you to try. That concludes this lesson. Here's your homework. Um, ask questions when you get to class.